everyone. My name is Donnie Lowy from CloseThatExplosion.com. I have a wholesale business in New York. The next time you are in New York, you are welcome to visit my warehouse. Today, I'd like to talk to you about how to sell wholesale products to New York stores. Now, there are a few things that you have to have in mind about the New York market. First of all, it's extremely competitive. You have a lot of retailers, whether they're national, international retailers, boutiques, um, you know, chains, let's say, of two or three stores. So it's a very competitive market. Now, it's also located by, we have ports. We have a port in New Jersey. So there's always merchandise coming into New York, whether it's being imported from China, from Pakistan, from South America, or actually merchandise even being made in the United States. So if you are going to be selling into the New York market, you have to make sure that you have merchandise that has, let's just say, a feature or a benefit that allows it to compete with all the other merchandise that's being flooded into the New York marketplace. That's the first thing. Now, the second thing is, you have to also be aware of the retailers that you're dealing with, what their corporate structure is. Now, if it's a mom and pop, sh- mom and pop shop stop, or it's an independent store, then, you know, you could go there on your own. You could meet the owner of the store. The owner of the store might be right there. You can make a deal with them. If it's a chain, let's say three or four stores, you know, they'll give you the phone number of the buyer or the owner, and then you set up an appointment, you show them the samples. They might have a buyer in the store. Every store might have its own buyer. If it's a national chain, then you're going to be given the phone number of the headquarters, and you're going to be you're going to ask for the buyer. You're going to send them samples, meet with them in person, and try to make a sale. If it's an international company, then you're going to find out who their buyers or presents them in the United States. And if they have a regional buyer, then you're going to deal with that buyer. Now, as far as having a competitive feature, competitive benefit, that's going to be more challenging. And that's where you're going to have to really know your market, and you're going to have to know the other products that are found in the marketplace. Now, here's something I want to tell you from my own experience as a wholesaler in New York, whether as a, whole, as a wholesaler selling to stores in New York, or you know, as a wholesale buyer in New York. There is a lot of generic merchandise in the New York marketplace, meaning there's a lot of, let's say, let's say, for example, dresses, right? That's a big item that I sell. You can see the dresses behind me. Now, there are a lot of dresses that are not brand name, and they're just generic dresses that are being made in China. I would recommend that you don't focus on those dresses because then you're going to be competing based on price alone. And if you compete based on price alone, there's always going to be someone who could sell it at a lower wholesale price. And even if there isn't, you're going to have to sell it at a very low wholesale price to ensure that no one else could sell at a lower price than you can. What I would recommend is, let's say with the example of dresses, either focus on a brand name, because if you carry brand name dresses, you've already distinguished yourself from all the sellers of non-branded dresses, and there's going to be more of an appeal for those brand name dresses because people are going to recognize that brand name. Another approach is, if you can get a product that's not widely available in the marketplace, or if you can get a product and then you make changes to that product, you add a value to that product, that other sellers don't have, then you're going to be able to capture the attention of buyers of stores. Let's say, for example, you sell dresses. And let's say they're non-branded dresses, right? And I just previously said that's a very challenging thing to do. But if you could, let's say, do special embroidery on the dresses, you know, add some beads, add some stones, make the dress special, then you can have a product that other sellers don't have, and that's going to give you an advantage. And what you can also do is you can look for special closeout deals. Now, let's say you find a closeout deal, whether it's for a non-branded item or for a brand name item, and if you get it at a good enough price because it's a closeout, so you get it at a very low price, then you're going to be able to compete with other wholesalers because you're going to have it at a lower wholesale price. Now, how do you get those closeouts? You could come to closeout warehouses like my warehouse, see what closeouts I have available, buy those closeouts, and then shop them around. Go to other stores in New York and show them the merchandise that you have available. You can also call the brands directly, find out what closeouts they have available. You can go to sales that happen when a store goes out of business, buy up the merchandise at a low price, take that merchandise, and then sell it to stores in the New York marketplace. Now, another thing you should be aware of, in the New York marketplace, a lot of stores, they want you to give them credit, whether it's 30 days, 60 days, or even 90 days. Before you give anyone credit, make sure to check out their, you know, the credit worthiness of the store. If you need to use a factor, that's a good option. A factor will pay you ahead of time for the invoice, but at a discount, and then they will pay 
the you know they'll pay you at a discount and then they will collect the money from the store whether it's 30 60 or 90 days later of course the advantage is you're getting your money up front but the disadvantage is the factor is going to pay you at a sizable discount but you're not going to get all of the money so if you feel comfortable you have a good relationship with a retailer then go ahead and you know give them credit I mean give them terms where they can pay you later on what I would recommend is I don't give credit so what I would do is I offer people a really good discount a really low wholesale price to give them a reason to buy from me as compared to someone who will give them credit right let's say someone who will give them credit will sell them dresses at forty dollars wholesale but I'll sell them the same dresses for as low as twenty dollars wholesale but they need to pay up front all right, hope you enjoyed this video. The next time you're in New York, please visit my warehouse. My website is closedatexplosion.com. Thank you and have a great day.